Hello guys and welcome back to yet another video. I hope you are all having an amazing day today. And in this video, we're going to be talking about how to astral project for beginners, but this method can be used by anyone. This is the exact process that I used to get frequent out of body experiences when I was just first starting this practice. And still, this is one of my favorite methods to use. So I'm gonna be breaking that down today and sharing it with you. We're going to be going into how to prepare to have an out of body experience, what to do before bed, and how to actually do the technique to get out of body. So let's jump into the method. First, it's best that you have built up some dream recall before you attempt to have out-of-body experiences. That way you have good recall of your experience and you have more awareness in your experience so you can control it. So if you don't have a dream journal, I definitely recommend grabbing a dream journal and it's super easy to start recalling your dreams even if you haven't remembered dreams for a while. So all you want to do is write down or practice writing down your dreams as soon as you wake up in the morning. And before you go to bed, you can say an affirmation as you fall asleep like, tonight I'll remember my dreams. I have excellent dream recall. And I just repeat that as I'm falling asleep and I expect to have dreams when I wake up and I start to recall dreams more and more each night with doing this each night. And as soon as you wake up in the morning, just ask yourself what you dreamt of. A lot of us don't even take time to ask ourselves what we dreamt of, so our brain doesn't see it as a priority to keep that information in the conscious mind. So if you start practicing remembering your dreams and showing your brain that it is a priority to remember them, you'll start to recall more and more dreams each night. And with this practice, you'll be able to remember your full out-of-body experiences and you can keep those in your dream journal as well so you can go back and look at them. Before you go to bed, try not to take any substances that could interfere with your sleeping cycle. So this is cannabis, alcohol, and certain medications that you are prescribed. So you'll want to look into any medications that you're taking to see if they interfere with REM or your sleep cycle, because anything that puts you into deep sleep, it's going to cause you to not really have good dream recall in the morning, and it's going to make it harder to stay aware and conscious during your technique. So if you can help it, try not to take any of these substances before you go to sleep and attempt to have an out-of-body experience. And don't eat heavy foods before you go to bed. I usually say uh, wait two hours to go to bed after you eat. Um, that way you are lighter, your body can concentrate on dream recall and rest, and it doesn't have to put all of its energy into digesting food. That makes it a lot harder to lucid dream, I've noticed, and have out-of-body experience, and it also affects your dream recall. So it really does take a lot of energy for your body to digest food, especially when you're laying down trying to go to sleep. So if you can, wait two hours to go to bed before your last meal. Next is having a night routine, something to initiate the intention that you want to have an out-of-body experience and maybe something that you want to do in your experience. So you can write this intention down, you can write out the actual experience that you hope to have, you can meditate on this intention, but you really want to see going to bed as initiating yourself into another state of mind. This is where we have our dreams, our lucid dreams, our out-of-body experiences. So start to see it as an exciting thing going to bed and hold on to an intention of what you actually want to experience. And again, I definitely recommend writing these things down and reading through your dream journal before you go to bed as well because that preps your mind with dream content and out-of-body experience content if you have that in there and it helps keep the intention fresh as you fall asleep. Now this is where you're going to go to bed and you're going to actually set your alarm to wake up two hours before you normally wake up. So this is going to throw your natural alarm clock off and it's going to help catch you in a certain state of sleep, hopefully REM sleep, which will make it easier to access the hypnagogic state, the lucid dream state, and have an out-of-body experience from this state as well. So just go to sleep and set your alarm two hours before you normally wake up. Now after you've woken up from your alarm, you want to stay up for 15 to 30 minutes and do very relaxing tasks. You don't want to check your phone, you don't want to turn on the TV, and you don't want to get on your laptop or anything. You want to either be reading, meditating, doing yoga, writing in your dream journal, or reading your dream journal. Something like that that you can do for 15 to 30 minutes as you stay awake. After the 15 to 30 minutes are up, you want to go back to bed, lay down on your back, and spread out your arms and legs. You don't want your arms or legs touchy, touching, you want to completely 
relax. If your room is not dark enough, I recommend having a sleeping mask and having that on as you go into this experience. Make sure your room is relaxing, something that you can really relax in. Sometimes I have like essential oils going in my diffuser. I'll have a light blanket on. You don't want it to be too cold or too hot. You really want to set up the room to help you with your out of body experience. And the best way is to be very comfortable. And this also goes with the kind of pillow you use. Sometimes I don't even use a pillow because after a while it starts to kind of kink your neck and you start to get uncomfortable, which could prevent you from having an out of body experience. And you really want to lay as flat as you can. So if you do have really fluffy pillows, switch to one that's a little bit thinner and more comfortable, or you can just take out the pillow altogether. I have had success with both. Next, you want to take in three deep breaths to completely relax your body. This really helps me release any tension in my muscles and it just helps my body relax altogether. So once you are comfortable in your bed, you have the pillows and everything how you want it for this technique, you know, in the blankets, you're completely ready to go. Take in those three deep breaths and completely relax and try not to move at this point. You really want to eventually trick your body into thinking that you're asleep. So that's why you want to get really, really comfortable so you can zone out of what your physical body is doing and focus on the technique. So take those three initial deep breaths. And I also recommend doing a body scan to see if you're holding any tension anywhere in your body. So start at your head and just become aware of how you feel at the crown of your head and work your way down. Because sometimes we don't even realize it and we're tensing our jaw or our neck or our hands or something. And doing a body scan will allow you to go from each point of your body and make sure that you're completely relaxed and that will help you a lot with this technique so you can fall into these deeper states of consciousness quicker. Let your thoughts flow, but don't willingly interact with them. If your mind is too distracted, you're not going to be able to fall into a deep enough state to actually get to the hypnagogic state and induce either a lucid dream or an out of body experience from this technique. So you really don't, you don't want to stop your thoughts because that's also creating resistance, but you just want to let the, the thoughts flow and just concentrate on the vast emptiness and space behind your closed eyes. Once you start to focus on this dark space behind your closed eyes and you actually see it as a vast space, you're going to start to notice it has more depth and you can start to feel more depth. And this is basically you shifting your awareness into this visualization instead of what your physical body is doing. So try to do that and really get immersed in the depth and vastness behind your closed eyes. Eventually you will start to see colors flow in and out of your vision. This is called hypnagogic imagery, but you don't want to fully interact with it and uh, follow this these colors wherever they are under your closed eyes because they will eventually disappear if you do that so you really want to stay relaxed have a fixed point that you're looking at and just allow those colors to flow sometimes it's just in your peripheral vision you really want to look but then you notice the colors will move or go away altogether so try to just relax have a fixed point that you're looking at and let those colors form and move Eventually, after holding still and watching this hypnagogic imagery, you may start to feel uncomfortable. You may have the urge to itch or move or even perhaps roll over and just go to sleep. And this is called the roll over signal. This is basically your body checking in to see if you are awake or asleep. It notices that you haven't moved for a while and it's not sure if you are asleep or not. So it sends you urges and signals for you to interact with so your body can see if you're awake or asleep. Since we want to induce the vibrational state for an out of body experience, and you can also induce a lucid dream this way. Since we want to get to those experiences, we have to trick our body into thinking that we're asleep. So we should not interact with these signals. So if you suddenly get a really intense itch or you really want to move or all of a sudden you just feel really, really, really uncomfortable, it's probably the rollover signal and it will pass it probably around five-ish minutes. It really depends. Sometimes it's really quick, but time seems to be warped when you're meditating and in these states of consciousness. But I promise you, if you just hold still and completely relax, it takes a couple tries sometimes, the, the rollover signal will pass you'll start to feel relaxed, and then the sensations that you feel from this point on will continue. At this point, you may feel tingling, you may feel a little bit of a vibration, you might see a lot of really intense colors under your closed eyes. Some people will feel like they're floating at this point. 
like their body is spinning or like they're just laying in a different position in their bed than they know that they are. And this is basically just your mind disassociating with your physical body, which is what we want for the experience. We want to feel so light that our mind actually starts to separate from what our physical body is doing. And that's where this visualization is gonna come in. So what you're gonna wanna do is completely relax, surrender. And it's almost like this energetic thing you have to do. And then all of a sudden your muscles start to just relax. You feel like you've totally surrendered and you're just bathing in these sensations. Once you do that, you want to pick a target. So you probably want to do this before the technique just to prepare, but you want to choose a target somewhere in your house or maybe outside of your house that you've, that you've been before and some place that you can really pick out lots of detail. For example, my target is my office. So if I wanted to use my office as my target in this technique, I would imagine standing in my office. Where would I be standing? What would I see from that point of view that I'm imagining? What textures are in my office? What does it smell like in my office area? You really want to observe all of the fine details regarding your target or, you know, depending on what your target is or where your target is. And once I start to think about being in my office space very vividly and I imagine the sensations of being there, the visualization of being there, the smells of being there. Do I usually have music on over here? You know, you want to activate your senses in this imagination, in this visualization and all of the sudden, since you've disassociated from your physical body senses, you'll notice that your brain starts to embody these senses and you actually start to feel like you're at your target. So that's why I definitely recommend choosing a target before you go into this technique. That way you can study the target before you go in. You can look at the textures and the colors and the energy and the feeling of that space. And then you can start to imagine it when you are in this technique and really feel like you are there. That's the key to this specific technique. Now I always say focus on visualization and sensation. So what it feels like to actually be there and what it looks like to be there and what senses you'd actually be able to use in that area or what it would be like for your senses to be in that area. And learning all of the unique qualities about your target is really like learning what the back of your hand look, looks like. Eventually it becomes really, really familiar to you and you notice all of the little details that you didn't notice before. That's what you want this target to do for you. So this technique might take take a couple times, but I recommend using the same target over and over and over. That way each time you can see and embody more detail than the last time, you know, and it becomes more and more real. Once you really start to imagine this target uh, that you've chosen when you're in this state that we've been talking about, all of a sudden you will feel yourself shift there. You start to it starts to feel like you're there because of what you can smell, what you can hear, what you can feel. And all of a sudden your vision will open up and you'll actually be in that area. And if you practice this every single day, like for example, for like a week, it's going to become more and more real and you could just be waking up near that target. So you don't always have to use this for induction. Sometimes just the habit of practicing this technique will cause you to have spontaneous experiences that you wake up in. But the key to this is separating your mind from what your physical body is doing. So you give your mind new information to focus on, a new area, new sensations, and that becomes more real to your brain than what your physical body is actually doing. And that's how you can shift your consciousness to that state. And this is a technique that I use so much when I first started and it's I still use it all the time I actually use it during naps so that's another thing if you have not tried taking a nap uh, and you've been practicing having out-of-body experiences maybe try your technique that you use or this one during a nap because that has drastically changed uh, my results in this practice and I know a lot of other people that really rely on naps specifically because it's like almost guaranteed sometimes to work so Definitely keep practicing this and you'll notice it starts to become more clear and more clear whatever your, whatever your target is and then all of a sudden your vision will literally open up in that area and it is really amazing. It doesn't have to be in your house, it could be like your childhood home. I almost recommend it being in your house especially when you're first starting because then you can just go to that area and study it and then go try the technique. So I hope that this makes sense, I hope that this helps. Let me know if you guys have any 
questions and I would love to chat with you guys about it. If you guys are interested in joining the membership I have on this YouTube channel, definitely check out the join button next to subscribe. There's lots of awesome stuff for members and I will see you guys next time. And as always, I love you so much and I'm sending you endless love and endless lucidity.